ثوك تلان مملو من حبرثو زي القاي أحو ملفونيثو و و إذا بمنع أكت أسيريان أكتيفست هاركة عامين هدي وما قدثي وما لم مملو حاليهم فقد لها Now we have a speech by Zelge Aho, an activist, Khud. Shalom alaykum. Taudir kurno shayt kitiyo harki amayna. Kitli fsihu thorabto inno qudrono tuyono bu convention qamoyo dual Syrian confederation d'orifi. Mishgolona bu ngni shoyo. يعني نكمة يقنونه ويجي كرت أيضا هالك أوصيت ويود كنا شفوا هملا. I recently moved from the U.S. to Sweden. The main reason being that my people are here. I feel closer to home here. I love Sweden so far. It's only been two months. Sorry, but I'm happy with my decision. I've broadened my knowledge of Assyrian-related matters. Moving here has been a dream of mine for years, and I was finally able to make it happen. When I tell people why I moved here, most are shocked. Not all, but most. I can understand when Swedes don't get how I left sunny California for not-so-sunny Sweden, but what I find disheartening is the number of Assyrians who have told me, oh, good I fat me we want to escape this place and you actually moved here? As someone from the outside looking in, I can tell you that most Assyrian American activists hold the nationalistic work in Sweden in a very high regard. From the outside, everything here looks wonderful and rosy. And we think that the achievements made here are something we should all strive for around the world. I can speak for myself when I say I really thought there was no discord when I first came here. Boy, did I learn I was wrong very quickly. But just because there's discord and division and differences in opinion and ideology, that doesn't mean that what Swedish Americans, sorry, Swedish Assyrians have accomplished is nothing. As a matter of fact, it is quite a lot. As an outsider, or should I say a newcomer, I believe I can see things a lot of you can't see anymore, with all due respect. And when I say you, I don't necessarily mean the people in this room, but the general Assyrian public in, in Europe, uh, who have lost a lot of their passion and whose passion needs to be reawakened. I don't blame you. You've been here for a long time. You've seen a lot. I'm sure you're tired. I know it's been a tough road but I hope I can give you some hope. What you have here in Europe, what we have here, is a very vibrant Assyrian community. We have associations and federations doing remarkable work. We have organizations working tirelessly to help our people and further our cause. We have little children who can speak one of the oldest languages in the world. In towns where there are so many Assyrians that even the Swedes have picked up Suryoya. So many people have told me I have a very romantic view of the nationalistic scene in Sweden. I think I can uh, blame that or give thanks to that to my father. Um, I know I do. I have a very romantic view. But for every Assyrian I've met who can't be bothered to work for our people, I've met many more who truly care and sacrifice a lot to work for our cause. I'm inspired every day by people I hear about or meet who are doing so much for our people. I know things are not perfect, but I want you to see what you've built here for decades through new eyes, through my eyes. I uprooted my whole life in America to move here because I felt like all the things I just spoke of that many people in Europe have come to take for granted were missing from my life in the States and my love for my people and my nation are worthy enough for me to make that move. But being here is hard for me. It's a bitter feeling, bittersweet feeling day in, day out. For those who don't know, my father is my father. It's something I feel every single day. It feels wrong to be in Sweden when he's not here. It feels 
The first time I ever came here was with him, and that trip to Europe was a turning point in my life and in my nationalistic work. So being here, seeing all the people that I initially met through him, finally meeting people who I heard stories about since I was a little girl, putting faces to names, hearing people tell me how much they love him and what he awoke in them nationalistically, fills me with so much happiness and pride, but it is always with a tinge of sadness of missing him. But still we continue for our nation. People have told me that seeing me reminds them of him, that they can see his spirit in me. Nothing makes me happier, and I will never tire of hearing that. But I want you all to know, to everyone I've met in the past several years on this journey, you have also given me life through your love for him, and through that, your love for me. I will end with one of my favorite of my dad's quotes about those of us who work for our nation. This is something very important that I think we all need to remember on a daily basis. And I think there's very few of us who do that. There's many who need to be reminded of that.